Hi, this is Sabine Nair again. I'm a program manager on the Common Data Service Team. In the previous video, I talked about standard entities. In this video, we're going to talk about or create a custom entity. So before you create a custom entity, it's a good question to ask, do I need one? Can I use the existing entities? So depending upon the app that you're trying to build, in this case, we'll build an app which shows the various flooring options, carpet, tile, uh, hardwood. We'll show the various flooring options to a customer. So for this app and to demonstrate how to build a custom entity, I'm going to create one. But as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm going to show you how to use existing entities using the relationship and also use Pickless. So let's look at, look at the data first. It's good to spend some time with the data that you have. In this case, it's an Excel spreadsheet, uh, which shows the various flooring uh, options. Uh, you can tell there is a name. It's a text field. I show the various names of the flooring. There's a product ID. This is empty. And I'll show you how to uh, pull data into this column. Uh, in fact, there are two ways. One is you could just literally in Excel go and edit this field, or you could use something called lookups and pull data from an existing entity. And I'll show you that. You have category, which is again a text field, a product type, text field, selling unit price. This is not a text field, it's a currency, uh, it's USD, so we'll, we'll build that accordingly. Status. Now, you could use this as a text field, or you could use existing pickless, which is nothing but fixed values, a currency and pickless. Let's create a new entity. We'll call it, we'll give it a display name, flooring estimates, description, this is an entity used to show various flooring options and estimates, okay? A meaningful description always helps. Hit next, and there you go. It's already created it. It has created some default fields. These are system-generated fields. Now, the fields that we need per the spreadsheet are these. So name, let's create the name, category, product type, and description fields. So you just say add a field. Let's call it name. The display's name, name, and the type here. This is the data type. What kind of field this is? This is a text field. So we'll just use text, add the field. The next one from a spreadsheet is category. We're going to skip the product title. We'll come back to that. Category and product type. So add a new field. Say category, category, and this is a text field again. Add a field. Another one, which is product type. If you notice, the display name and the name, while they can be the same, one restriction on the name is there should be no spaces. You could use underscores, but I typically just combine the two letters, two words. And this is also a text field. Add a field. And I believe we have one more which says description and selling unit price, okay. So description, call it the same. And this is a multi-line text because we are storing a lot more than one single line. So add the field. Now the selling unit field, your selling unit price. So this is selling unit price. And this is of type currency because we're storing uh, the flooring estimates in this. So this is currency, add the field. Now the two fields that are left out were product ID and status. So let's do the product ID. First, we let's save the entity.
Okay, this entity is saved now. Now, if you remember, there are two fields that we haven't created yet. We have the product ID and status. And I'll show you, while we could have done it along with these other fields, I'm showing you how we can use existing entities and pick lists to kind of fulfill our needs. So let's go back to our standard entities. If you remember, in my previous video, I talked about the product entity and how it's type function that is used, the data is used by nearly every other entity. So if you go to product entity, you'll notice that there is already a field called product ID, which absolutely matches with the field that we want. If you look at it, there's test data in there, and you can see that it has data P01s and P02s. So we're going to use this. And as I said, there are two ways to kind of build this out. You could, either you could edit the spreadsheet directly like you always do, or you could use existing entities. For this exercise, I'm going to use the existing one. And I'm also going to show you how to create a relationship between the two entities and create a lookup. So let's go back to our entities. Let's go back to our custom entity that we just created. And now we'll go to relationships. We'll say add a new relationship. In the related entity, we are going to pick the product entity. Product, there you go. You can leave the rest as it, and you can see its type lookup. Save. There you go. It's saved now. Now, one more remaining is the status field. Under entities, you'll see the section called pickless. Pickless, as I said, is a set of fixed values. So I know we have an existing pickless called status, which we can leverage for building our application. Status. It has two values, active and inactive. Now, if you look at a spreadsheet again, you'll see that's exactly the kind of data that we wanted. So we'll reuse what we already have. So let's go back to our entity that we just created and in this case create a new field let's call it status status and in this case the type would be pick list and we have to show which pick list to pick so we have status Looks like there are several statuses, so I'm just going to go pick this one. Okay, that's what we wanted. Add field, we're good to go. Now we have a custom entity which has all the fields that match the spreadsheet that we are trying to import. So we save the entity, and the next step would be to import the spreadsheet. 